of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Friends, good morning and a warm welcome to each and every one of you here as we celebrate this 15th Sunday in ordinary time. In today's gospel, Jesus ends the parable of the sword by proclaiming, Lower his ears ought to hear. For the times we have ignored the word of God and closed our ears to the sound of his voice, let us acknowledge our sins and to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you so deceive the mercy and reconciliation among us for the mercy of the Lord. Christ Jesus, you shower us with mercy and kindness. Christ, the mercy. Christ. Lord Jesus, you nourish us with your body and your blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and give us our sins and bring us to the last of life. Glory to that alliance. Until meadows overflow with 
and rejoicing hopes the hills. The fields are covered with flocks, and the valleys blackened with rain. They shout and sing for joy. The city that falls on the ground will yield a full harvest. Look and perceive. The gross of the heart of this people, 
they will hardly hear their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and be converted, and I will heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. Amen. I see to you many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. The evil one comes and steals it away, and what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but has no room and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among the thorns is the one who hears the word with an worldly anxiety and the more virtues choke the word, and it bears no fruit. When the seed sown on her soul is the one who hears the word and understands it, who needs bear, who need bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. In 1986, there was a composer, uh, this one I think you know him, Steve Jonas. He wrote a song uh, called Soul of Word. And when I was in Catholic school in the 90s, that was a very popular song to be sung. It's based upon our, of our first reading here. It has a nice little piano on it, so you know, right? Yeah, you know. <laughs> Many of you know this song. Uh, the lyrics go, So the Word, King's the Word, So the World, King of Church Learning, who died for the world, as love as a so it's a whole thing. We're not here to talk about music. We will find out why I know sorry to trash. But we're not here to talk about music. What we are here to talk about today is uh, about being attentive to the word. Because even though a good song can be written about it, even though we can have 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 it, our gospel reading today, even the text that the, the theme about you know the seed falling on the ground and it being fall, falling on different parts of the soil, you know, uh, poor soil, rich soil, seed when it falls into the thorns. In many ways, not only a familiar gospel to us, a familiar text, maybe just a familiar theme, but it's certainly indicative of the range of our lives. Because often, as it been within our own life, that we have seen but not seen. We have heard things but not listened. Nor understood them. Nor even made an attempt to understand them. It's a very interesting time within our world, and certainly a time that is um, one that is filled with. Uh, Attention there. Not only because of the coronavirus, but because of what's happening in our world in terms of systematic racism uh, that's, that's coming to light. And so then it can be very easy, even for myself, to kind of tune out those things. To say I'm going to go into my own little bubble, I'm going to go into my own little bowl, and I'm going to wait for 2020 to be over, and hopefully 2021 will be better, and there will be a vaccine. That we reforms, that we these other things. But is it not that uncomfortable conversation that happens and that's happening right now? And as it lands within our hearts, the challenge for us is to say, where does it fall? Does it fall, does it fall on rocky soil? Does it fall in a patch of thorns? Does that seed fall into rich soil? And I don't know what your heart says. Only you do. I know in the deep recess of your heart and in your, your, your inner most being knows where that seed falls. And if you ask yourself that each day where it falls, it might be different than where you ask yourself tomorrow where it falls. Today might be on this show, tomorrow might be on this show. 
but it's important to realize and to understand where does that seed fall. And I'm not going to just talk about the seed of social change, I'm also talking about the seed of God's word. Where does that fall in our own mind or in our own heart? Because as we look at the Christian life, we need to understand that just as that seed of social change can fall in different parts of our hearts, in different parts of the soil, so too the word of God and God's impact in our life can fall in different parts of our hearts for being honest. Because when the Lord gives us that grace or that voice within our people to be to say, I know what you gotta do, or you know what you have to do, I know how I need to change. When that falls upon myself, I ask where does that fall? And what do I do with it? Do I nurture? Do I water? Do I allow the thorns of worldly pleasure to choke? I was recently having a conversation with a friend of mine who was born in the seminary and now married with a beautiful child, a beautiful little girl. We were on the phone recently and uh, you know, we were just kind of sharing uh, how quarantine had been. And we were kind of comparing our, our notes of like how we were calling me through. And I, I, I said to him, I said, you know, your life sounds so beautiful. Because you have a newborn baby girl who recently got married. How beautiful your life is. And how he challenged me afterwards. He said, you know, Father, even though we were a classical system, the Father was just weird. He says, you know, Father, you got to start watering your own grass. Start watering your own lawn. So create that rich soil. And that's what the long way on to what my garden is like. Let's look at your own garden and say, what are you going to do to make it a floral ground? And that's the challenge for us, isn't it? The challenge for us is that very easily, we can easily try to just brush by into a void as it means of coping the things that are difficult. We can see that one little weed in the corner of the garden will say, well, and I'll do that later, and then they see, you know, it's as tall as I am, and I'm only five foot four. But when we do that in front of work, of actually attending to that garden, attending to that soil, and nurturing it, and cultivating it, that is the gift of our soul, with the gift of faith, you will see great fruit. Our challenge for us to is to this, is to not turn a blind eye, nor to turn a deaf ear to what God is encouraging us and challenging. And that even goes for me. Because it can be very easy to turn away and just go avoid and say, I'll deal with it later. But dealing with it now and cultivating what God is encouraging us to do as a community of faith, as a church, as a society, and as a world, will indeed be for us a difficult conversation. But a fruitful one that are 160 and 34. May the Lord give us the grace and courage to not be afraid to look within ourselves and to see where is that worth it. So we can, just like Stephen John says in his 1986 hit, so the word.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to be right in John's opening and our salvation. Always never to give you thanks. Lord, only Father Almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And by this body we are the Lord spirits and the effects of your care. But even now, as us the pledge of Our Father, who art in heaven, 